reckless mistake by an explorer on an aquatic moon could lead to war between humans and aliens in a darkling sea. That's the book I'm reviewing on this episode of SFF 180. Hello everybody, TMW here as always, good to see you, with my personal assistant Wink. A Darkling Sea is the debut novel of James L. Cambius, a writer who comes to SF from the gaming world. Now it's a confident and very appealing story, buoyed by clarity of prose and uh, a very witty and imaginative approach to the premise of alien contact that recalls such uh, legendary talents as Larry Niven, let's say old Larry Niven that is, or, or Frederick Pohl, or Hal Clement. Now sometime in the future, humanity has been given the technology of interstellar travel by the alien Sholin race, but the Sholin have slapped very, very heavy restrictions on our interstellar explorations, putting rules very much uh, like Star Trek's Prime Directive in place, limiting our contact with any alien civilizations that may just be discovered, that sort of thing. Now, naturally, these rules are very chafing to the scientific team living miles beneath the icy crust of the moon Ilmatar, in a dark ocean inhabited by an intelligent, civilized species of aboriginals who are, so far, entirely oblivious to the human presence on their world. Off you go. Go play. Now, one member of the scientific team, a rather egocentric media personality that nobody likes, decides he's going to skirt these rules by donning a snazzy stealth diving suit and swimming as close as he possibly can to a group of the lobster-like native Ilmatarans, who and now they see only in sonar. They see no visible light, right, because they're in this black ocean. So he tries to get as close as he can, and this, shall we say, does not end well for him. Now, as soon as word as, uh, of the incident gets out, a team of Sholin envoys barges into the humans' undersea base and demands that everybody pack it in and go home. Tempers fray, xenophobic tensions build, and before you can say, well, that escalated quickly, violence and possibly even war are in the offing. Now, Cambius is an entertaining storyteller. He's not afraid to use wit to diffuse tension when appropriate. His characters are very sympathetic on both the human and the Sholin sides, and what he deftly manages to pull off is a way of showing both the similarities and the clear differences between the human and Sholin characters. Uh, and what is very clearly portrayed is the deep irony in this entire situation. The Sholin are creating the very situation that they hope to avoid simply by barging in and intruding the way they've done in order to enforce their law. Now the Omatarans show real inspiration in their depiction as well. Their culture, their laws, their sciences, uh, undersea farming that they do, the way in which their societal outcasts have to resort to a life of often extremely violent banditry. All of this is portrayed very, very believably. And the fact that we are offered sympathetic viewpoint characters from all three species adds to our impersonal investment as readers in the story. Now, where the book could have used improvement is in its very uneven sense of pacing, which sometimes makes the story feel like it's starting to drag, right as the suspense should be getting unbearable. Also, the final chapters feel less like they're just naturally, organically leading us to the climax of the story, and more like sometimes events are being forced to fit the needs of the plot in order to get us to the ending. Uh, for example, without getting close to any spoilers, certain allegiances are made very, very late in the story, where it would have been better to have had those made earlier in the story between the various parties, so that there would be a much stronger sense of valid emotional connections being made. So the way it stands, climactic events now feel a little bit rushed, and that actually has the effect of disengaging our investment rather than engaging it. But in the end, I'm giving A Darkling Sea a three-star bottom line. We see way too few of these old-school, hard SF tales of deep space exploration and discovery. Uh, the SF used to be thick with these. We hardly ever see them anymore. I think that their revival should be encouraged. James L. Cambius is a fresh talent. He's brimming with ideas, with humor, uh, with a really good sense of humanity's foibles, as well as our very best qualities. And I think his career is going to be worth following. And that is all I have time for on this episode of SFF 180. Thank you for joining me. Once again, remember, the most important thing, these are reviews. You're not always going to agree with me, but if you liked watching, then click the like. Share this video far and wide with your SFF reading friends, and above all, please subscribe to the channel. This has been a great week of growth for the channel, and I'd love to see that continue. And until I see you guys next time, happy reading.